You know, I didn't really feel too confident in making this video, mostly because this kind of topic is really, really simple. We just wrapped up the entire One Year Later series for 2023, wherein we talked about prospects from last year's draft and just went over their stories, how everything went one year removed throughout the draft. And I mean, today we're talking about a guy who is technically in his six years later phase. But I don't know if we really want to use that tagline. We might just stick around with five years later, because today we are talking about the best player on the Vancouver Canucks, the top center on the team, their first 100-point scorer since Daniel Sedin in 2011. Let's talk today about Elias Pettersson. Now, last time we had talked about a Pedersen, it was yesterday. We talked about Ole Olevi Dahlin and Emil Pedersen, Ilias' older brother, all playing for Timur IK in the SHL. But in this video, what I wanted to do was talk about Elias and go over some very interesting perspectives about him that are quite outdated. Now, you don't need the rundown here. Pedersen is one of the top centers in the entire NHL. The guy is 24 years old now. How nuts is that? It still feels like he is a brand new hotshot in the league. But nah, the guy's 24, he's two years older than I am actually, and he is signed to a contract that takes him to the end of 23-24, so we'll see whether or not he does decide to stick around beyond that. Last year, Pedersen had 102 points in 80 games played, 39 goals, and 63 assists. He started out his NHL career with 10 goals in 10 games. So even though you could debate and realistically say that he has a much higher goal-scoring ceiling, he still had 39 goals last year. Almost 40, I think he could get 40 this year, on top of 60, maybe 70 assists if everything goes right. Pedersen is one of the best Vancouver Canucks players of all time, and if he continues this pace into the long term, there is no reason why Vancouver should not retire his number one day. Of course, knock on wood, everything goes right and that actually transpires, but today what I wanted to do was look at a post made on the R Canucks sub by Escalotes. Take a look at this. It's been five years since the original prospect takes on Elias Pettersson. Here's what we said in 2018. Linked is a post made five years ago by Reversed, One Day Until Hockey, prospect highlight Elias Pettersson. This was posted back in the September period of 2018, and it talks about how Elias Pettersson was a 19-year-old fifth overall pick by the Canucks, who had played for the Vecqua Lakers in the SHL, getting 56 points in 44 games played. The article talks about his awards, SHL Top Forward, SHL Rookie of the Year, SHL Playoff MVP, SHL Regular Season MVP, SHL Champion. World Junior Silver Medal, most points by a regular season U-20 player in SHL history, led the SHL regular season in scoring, most playoff points by a U-20 player in SHL history in a single season, he led the SHL in playoff scoring, and he had the most goals and points by a junior player. Our long-necked child, Elias, has won awards after awards this past season, including our hearts. If his preseason was any indication, playing in the NHL will only be a slight adjustment for him. How many points do you see him scoring? What are your favorite Elias plays? And do you see him winning the Calder Trophy? Now, I love how the questions just pour in at the end here. It's kind of like the end of my videos, trying to stir up discussion by asking a bunch of hypotheticals. But spoiler alert, Ilias Pettersson in his first NHL season had 66 points in 71 games, 28 goals and 38 assists. I remember paying attention to this guy and saying at the beginning, yeah, if Pettersson needs to be in the AHL, that's fine. Like, this guy was so good in Sweden, he deserves all the benefits of the doubt that you can give him, and if he is not able to play in the NHL because he's too skinny, he's too lanky, he's not heavy enough, whatever, then play him in the AHL, allow him to dominate that league, and maybe he'll be an NHL player soon. But nah, who cares? Pedersen went out there and said, so what if I'm lanky? I can still score points. I can still get 10 goals in my first 10 NHL games and they'll have no choice but to play me on their team. So that's what happened. He had his rookie season, 66 points. What I wanted to do was talk about some of the comments made in this post from five years ago, going over some of the discourse and how this reflects today. In fact, we're going over onto the newer post. It's been five years since the original prospect takes on PD because some of the comments indicate the more outlandish and maybe even accurate 
predictions by our Canucks readers. The top comment from a few days ago, Escalotes says this, bonus points to Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Sion. Yeah, I'm not gonna question it. Whatever. Typo, it's actually spelt Elitus. But seriously, everything about this guy makes me want to throw caution to the wind. Burke has said he might not have a ceiling. Dauber Prospect says he has triple-digit upside. His ridiculous record-breaking year in Sweden. Just too many reasons to get excited. Then add the fact that he is so obviously a raw player with room to grow physically. The thought of what he can be is insane. My untrained eye doesn't detect any outright problems causing any deficiencies in his game. Seems to me like he doesn't need to fix anything. He just needs to continue and progress. I'm gonna go out on the limb and predict Elias Pettersson to have a point per game season by the end of his ELC and at least one 100 point season in his career. As crazy as it sounds, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. I am just way too hyped for this guy. He got in one. Elias Pettersson had a point-per-game season in his second year, pretty much. His first year, 66 points, 71 games, 5 games off, whatever. His second season, he was only 2 points off, 66 points in 68 games. And then, the 100-point season came just recently, as we had talked about, 102 points in 80 games played. Pettersson did decline point production wise in 21 22. His points per game took a significant dump because he had 68 points in 80 games. So, a much worse points per game than the first two seasons that he had had. But of course, the bounce back to 102 points, literally being one of the top players in the NHL, that was insane. And this Reddit user went out there and pretty much predicted that, saying, Yeah, analysts are talking about how PD does not have a ceiling. And Dauber says he's got triple digit upside. They were right. You then have a few other comments that really get funny when you read about him. Barely in college cites one of the quotes saying, Is it just me? Or if Pedersen plays center on the Canucks, he played right wing in Sweden, the Canucks will have one of the best center cores in the league. Pedersen, Horvat, Gaudet, and Brendan Gaunt slash Tyler Madden. Oh my gosh. This is what cringe feels like, dude. Brendan Gauntz was supposed to be a middle to top six center. Adam Gaudet was supposed to be the same thing. A lot of these guys are no longer in the Canucks system. A lot of these guys aren't even in the NHL. But at the end of the day, that's kind of the perspective that existed back then. That the Canucks center core, their forward core, was going to look so good. We talked yesterday about... Dahlin and Yolevi and these guys that were supposed to be great. I mean, it was a fun time back in 2017-18 when we would make videos consistently about how Dahlin had a hat trick in the Allsvenskan or whatever. It was great hype, especially for a young, rebuilding team like Vancouver. There was so much excitement and Elias Pettersson was kind of the front runner of it all. This was like before they even drafted Quinn Hughes. Like, sure, the Reddit post that we're reading was made after Hughes was drafted in 2018, but like, all the hype, all the videos that we made, I'm so nostalgic about that time because I was in high school when we were making those videos, but like, still, Canucks hype was always a thing, it's just now, taking a look at it today, it feels pretty weird seeing, yeah, Adam Gaudet, Tyler Madden, Brendan Gauntz, these guys were supposed to be amazing, and now it's like, yeah, what's up with them now? I don't know. Let's go over into the old post once more and just read some of these other comments. Mr. Barkley says, Pedersen is a future 110 point scorer. A reply says, I have high expectations for him, but I mean, even Crosby has only surpassed that number once. I'm thinking Pedersen is more like a future 90 plus point scorer. And I'm not gonna say that Pedersen is gonna break 110 next year for sure, but he had 102 already and he is only 24 years old. This guy still has more in the tank. You want to talk about the Sedin's development? If Pedersen becomes that good, if the league keeps on continuing to go up in terms of scoring and points, then who knows how many points Pedersen is able to cap off at. There may not be a ceiling here. Some of the other comments on this same Reddit thread talk about how there should be caution because if Pedersen does not get 60 points, it shouldn't be the end of the world. That's a really difficult task. But hey, he had it in his first season, and he just got better after that with a few setbacks, of course, with injuries and everything. So at the end of the day, Elias Pettersson 
has been so amazing. Five years later, he is as good as we could have hoped for, maybe even better in the eyes of most Canucks fans, and I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comments. How does this conversation make you feel? That Petey is this good? How did you feel about him five years ago? Did you think this was attainable for him as a ceiling? Do you even think he has reached a ceiling? Thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.